give yourself grace. Give yourself grace. It's so hard. It's so hard to just be like, you know what? I accomplished one thing today because there's so many societal pressures. There's internal pressures. There's familial pressures. You can't meet everybody's expectations. And to be honest with you, a lot of it is unrealistic expectations. So as long as you feel good about what you've done, at least you've done something. It's okay. Like just keep putting forth the effort to do and to try and just, you know, take it one day at a time. Mental health champions, we are back. Welcome to a mental health break. My name is Vincent A. Lancy, and I'm excited to be going from Florida over to Carolina today to be sitting down with Kendra. Nice to see you, Kendra. Nice to see you too, Vincent. Thank you for coming by and sharing your story. And everyone, if this is episode one for you, this is the number one podcast for mental health advocates. I connect with different mental health champions around the globe to share their story and let you know they're not alone. Kendra comes with a lot of value today. Not only will she share her story, but she is a specialist in the sex and porn addiction realm, a topic that does not come towards the show very often. So I was really excited to have her come on, give some value to our audience. Let's start right at that. You have your practice, the Healing Heart Center. What made you want to start this to help other people? So... To be honest with you, I honestly did not want my own practice. I never wanted my own practice. I kind of wanted to like run other people's practices and I kind of fell into sex and porn addiction. I've worked at treatment centers. I've worked for agencies and it just never worked out for me like that. Just because like I'm one of those, I just don't stay silent when I see things happening and so I kind of like trickled through different settings and then I ended up working at a at a group private practice and that's when I got introduced to sex and porn addiction and affair recovery and I fell in love with it and so I was there for about four years and I felt that I had gotten to a space where I outgrew the um, group practice and I really wanted to step out on my own and be able to kind of do my own thing and be the eclectic therapist that I always wanted to be. And that is when the Healing Heart Center was born. So Um, I love the story. Sometimes in life, the cards are laid out for us and we just take them and go with it. And it's great to see the passion you bring to the practice. What are some common problems that you experience with newer patients that come to you for the first few consultations? So usually, like, it's always this thing, you can't talk about it with anybody, like, within your family or your friends, because nobody really understands. There's so much shame and guilt. It just, it completely kind of impacts every level of your life, physical, emotional, mental, and it shows up in different areas at random spaces and times, specifically for partners. It's a sense of PTSD because triggers just happen. I mean, triggers happen in life regardless, but specifically within this particular aspect of addiction, it's really one of those, it's a betrayal trauma as opposed to just addiction that involves like alcohol or drugs and stuff like that. This is really more so matters of the heart. And that gets kind of tricky. I've got that here in the show notes. I like that. Betrayal trauma. Mm -hmm. Let's keep diving into that now. Where does this stem from? Is there science behind this? Explain to us where this trauma stems from and continues to grow. So really betrayal trauma specifically kind of falls into like the the relational aspects of interaction. It can happen from friends, it can happen from family, loved ones, but the inner depths of it and works what I work with more so happens like within marriages and re- um, within the intimate relationships. And it can look like, it really can look like anything from emotional affair to, you know, a physical, sexual affair. It doesn't necessarily have to be sex and porn addiction. It could be a broad aspect of of betrayal that really impacts the level of interaction or the trust between partners or spouses. 
You, I, I love how you made that point. It happens also within these dedicated relationships. Mm -hmm. What are some of the early steps that people need to take if they find themselves in these situations? If you were having someone new come to you, how would you get them started? So usually I just start by kind of exploring what happened and kind of get a better understanding of like where they are kind of like at that moment. And then we kind of go from there. Every person is different. There are some people that, you know, they don't want to know the details of what kind of betrayal happened from their partner or their spouse. Um, there's those that want the details. It just really depends. It's not cookie cutter at all. So I really come from the person centered approach in regards to like individual treatment plans, as opposed to like, oh, we're going to just put you in this category or put you over here. And no, I'm really focusing on what are your needs? What are your goals? Where you are right now? I um, mean, trying to get you to a place to where you're, you get a sense of emotional stability. So then we can start working on like the recovery aspects of things. I love that. Set, fixing the foundation first, getting mm -hmm. all of that out of the way. Do you typically see mainly porn and sex addictions or what other addictions? Because you mentioned betrayal that you have a, um, a wider net there. Yeah. So really it's either... It's either partners of sex and porn addicts or there has an affair has happened. Or, you know, it was a one or two time of a cheating or there was an emotional affair. I, I deal kind of with the, the, there's different levels. So I kind of go from like the simple, because betrayal trauma is betrayal. You cheat on me regardless that you had sex with the person or not. It still hurts my feelings. It's still a sense of betrayal. So I go from the most the simplest cases to really complex ones. I, I like that. I want to circle back to something you said, the emotional betrayal. Let's talk more about that. Emotions are challenging. Emotions are challenging and they don't teach us how to emotionally regulate. They don't teach us how to express ourselves in a, or communicate our emotions effectively. There's a sense of gender, social expectations. You know, so there's just so many barriers to being able to really understand and convey our emotions that are societal, they're familial, it comes up in the upbringing. So just being able to better understand how to manage your emotions and how to communicate them in a way that isn't attacking, but you're holding the person accountable, but you're also trying to navigate how you need support from the person that betrayed you. I love that. It sounds like communication is a big part of fixing this and could have maybe prevented it too. It's a, such a big thing. Communication and boundaries, I find, are the biggest barriers to being able to interact as a human being in relationships. Communication, and even as the career goes, professionally, personally, yeah. I always look back in the situation. If you look what went wrong, if something did, it most likely for me, at least stemmed from some kind of miscommunication or yep. communication error. Yeah. Nobody want to talk and everybody wants to assume and have unrealistic expectations. And that's where you get in trouble. Let, let's help. Let's help everybody out there. Say they're the assumers out there and they yeah. don't have it in them. They don't know where to start to talk. They don't, we don't know what's holding them back, but something is let's help them get there. Okay. For the assumers out there, we have to be realistic, right? If you don't put share it or put it out there to be processed by somebody, you're going to be left in this kind of fantasy land of what if or what not. You're just going to create this whole world of anxiety when you can just kind of kill all of that and, and put it out there. And I know for a lot of assumers, it's the fear. It's the fear of if I say something, how is this person going to respond to me? Well, guess what? That's not in your control. The only thing you can control is yourself. And you do a disservice when you don't advocate for yourself. And I need you to do that, Assumers. I need you to do that. It's important. You are not a rug match for anybody. You have to be assertive and learn and want to, to actually engage and acquire the skills to be assertive. Or I you love just that. Taking care of ourselves, being kind yeah. to ourselves. It's not selfish. It's not. Because if you don't know how to love yourself and really engage and be the healthiest version of you, how are you going to be with somebody else? 
I love that. I always say you can't be someone else's best friend if you're not your own best friend. No. We need to, not. especially, and I know you know, as an entrepreneur, the business can go, go, go. You can always be doing something, but just forcing myself to turn off and rest and reset yes. is so big. Do you find rest plays a big part into all of your mental health? We talked a lot about it professionally. Yes. Now let's talk about you a bit. Is rest yes. important for you? It is because like I, like I shared with you earlier, I have multiple careers. So finding balance is, is very important. On top of that, I have a 17-year-old daughter who has multiple mental health diagnoses. Specific, the biggest one and the biggest challenge right now, she's a schizophrenic. So having to navigate getting her stable and then also allowing her to be a teenager and then wanting to be, you know, ambitious and she loves softball. So like do managing that on top of managing all the things that I do, it is definitely a balance. And I had to learn how to implement self-care. I experienced burnout. I never wanted to experience it again. So it's one of those things where I really listen to my body and I listen to my mind. And so when the time comes, I just really like to get away, like getting away, being in silence. I'm a yogi. So I practice yoga weekly. Um, I'm really just hyper focused at this point to making sure that there is balance because I know what it feels like to be out of balance. And it just, it sucks. It really does. No other way to put it. It really is a bad feeling to not be able to hop back in your routines and be situated and rolling on all cylinders. Because once we're in that zone, that grind, I feel like we're on top of the world. That looks different for everyone. Even with the rest, I'm the same way. When I feel it, I just take it. Mm -hmm. When that day, usually it's on Saturdays now where that just comes the first half of the day is just me doing my rest. I don't always get the privilege of taking a full day off, but I do make sure to take those intentional breaks throughout the day. So when you turn off, my bike rides is like my number one thing with that, where I go on the bike ride. I don't put music on anymore. I'm just riding, clearing my head, taking walks during the day. I always talk about on this platform as a break from staring at that screen, the sunlight, which is a mood elevator, as you know, and then the natural noises and just things. It just brings me back to a baseline that I think is so important, like you experienced the burnout. Finding a way back to our baseline is our way. Do not be discouraged if you try new things to improve your mental health and they don't work. Mental health is not a one-size-fits-all. That's why we're going to ask our guest of honor today, what are some other things you do to take care of your mental health? For me, I always advocate for exercise in the morning. It just gets me going. For some people, they hate exercise, and that's okay. There are other things that we can help them with. Let's try it. Okay. So, so like I mentioned before, I'm a yogi. I love to travel. So anytime I can get away from home, I do that. I am a believer and I'm a Christian. So I listen to sermons in order to like encourage and amplify my spirit. So getting in touch with your higher power, if that's what you want to do, being able to just be one with yourself is a big thing. Even if you don't believe in a higher power, just being able to be connected within is really important in finding a sense of balance and peace. Because if all this is going on, you ain't got no peace going on. So just finding a a place to where you're, you're able to be the silent while you're in the middle of a whole bunch of people. It can look like anything, really. I appreciate you creating that awareness to do that once more. Again, we know it's easier said than done. We get busy. Whether you have kids and a job or two jobs or three careers or night school, something, Mm -hmm. we have to find a way to navigate that. And as much as it seems from the outside that taking that break is going to slow you down and everything, when I take that break, I come back sharper and better than ever which is now we're doing a second half a day interview, which I think has gone fantastic. I've really enjoyed our conversation. Before we find out where to find her online, can I get one piece of advice for all of our mental health champions who may be struggling today before we sign off? Of course, give yourself grace. Give yourself grace. It's so hard. It's so hard to just be like, you know what? I accomplished one thing today. Because there's so many societal pressures, there's internal pressures, there's familial pressures. You can't meet everybody's expectations. And to be honest with you, a lot of it is unrealistic expectations. So as long as you feel good about what you've done, at least you've done something, it's okay. Like, just keep putting forth the effort to do and to try. 
and just, you know, take it one day at a time. I, you're never going to be able to please everybody and you shouldn't be worrying about pleasing everybody. Yeah. You should be about pleasing yourself. And that was a huge, I guess, turning point at my career and life and everything. when it was just so locked in, not everybody is going to be your target customer. Not everybody listens to mental health podcasts. It's not yeah. the sex topics, my podcast, entrepreneurship and mental health. But if you're into that sort of thing, I try to bring the passion to each show along with a great expert guest to help you level up on your journey. Remember, you are never alone. Kendra, where can we get at you online, your website, any social media you use, any way to say hello? So the biggest way to get a hold of me, I have no social media presence for what I do, which I actually like because I'm not wanting or hurting for any type of appetite. So with that being said, you can go to the Healing Heart Therapy Center dot com. You can email me at Kendra at the, the, the Healing Heart Therapy Center dot com. You can find me on Psychology Today. You can just Google Kendra King, Charlotte, North Carolina, to be honest with you, and that'll give you any access to being able to contact me. So yeah, check out the website, Google my name in Charlotte, North Carolina, and there you go. All right, everyone, that's Kendra King, Charlotte, North Carolina. Go Google her, say hello, especially check her out if you're in the area. The show is at a mental health break on all podcast platforms. We're on all social media, and I am at Vincent Day Lancey on the same. Be sure to subscribe to this series if you enjoyed today's show and before we sign off this show is brought to you by coming alive podcast production your go-to source for podcasting learn more about them at comingalivepodcastproduction.com but we are signing off from carolina down to florida thank you so much kendra you're welcome 